How's it going everyone? Let's continue along with the typewriter here. So I've done a bit of work off of camera. Uh, just like before, everything blue is going to be things that I've worked on um, off of camera, just sort of as a very, as you can see, very rough um, layout of how things are gonna be. Uh, so in this part, we are going to be jumping actually right to sort of the, the additional keys, some of the keys that we didn't um, fully link up before, some of the exception pieces so these guys on the side that actually don't connect uh, to this main piece, they all sort of have weird purposes on the side. I'd imagine things like the shift key or anything like that would have more um, mechanically complex pieces to go along with it, and, and I'm assuming that's what these guys are. Uh, we also sort of have this back connection for all the keys, sort of where they sort of rest. Um, that's not going to take too long at all. Uh, in fact, even though it looks like there's a lot of stuff going on here, I'm going to be going through and explaining why I sort of placed everything the way that I did, how I came up with it. So I'm not sort of leaving you guys in the dark here. This is still going to be uh, fully broken down. It's just um, as far as this stuff goes, I didn't want to fumble around and just sort of experiment with how everything was plugged in. I thought it would make more sense to um, go ahead and figure that out so we don't run into a similar problem as we did with the last sort of attempt with the keyboard um but yeah most of this stuff is a lot a lot more simple than it looks so let's start off with this back piece so this is just sort of an extension that sort of has a bunch of cuts in it that these keys that are resting in between here i'll plug into um, if i go and Look at this 3D model, this does a much better job of explaining it. So it's kind of like this, yeah, this back plate that everything sort of rests in. And then we have these keys that weave between the ones that we've already made. So the placement's already done. Um, if I take one of these guys out, very, very simple shape. It essentially comes out straight and then extrudes up and rounds out to plug in. Um, and then I just put it in between every single key so they're not on the outside, they're all on the inside. There is a little bit of a gap between everything. Um, but that should be fine. I'm actually gonna go ahead and select all of these. Which might take a second, but there's a, a couple things I do wanna do very slight adjustments to. Because they don't really seem properly centered so I want to shift them all a little bit to the left um, if they were as wide as these gaps they'd look a little bit too chunky so I just thin them out and I figure that nobody would really <laughs> honestly be able to notice that they're not perfectly aligned from most angles um, they're gonna look like they're lining up just fine it's not unless you're looking from straight down that you'd notice um, but let's just shift them all a little bit and then if we isolate them we can go ahead and do a mesh combine and I just want to make sure that these backs are straight. So this is just a look at the shape, extrude, 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 and then, yeah, beveled corners, very, very simple. Um, and then they're just plugging into the back here. This back is something we'll have to do um, a little bit more work on. So what I can actually do is, yeah, isolate these two guys. Essentially all we're trying to do is extrude from here to here. So let's just make some cuts, maybe a cut here, here, cut here, cut here. And we can just sort of grab all these edges and squish them so they're even in size and snap it down. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and delete this guy. So now we have this basic shape, can even close it off so it's proper geo and I'm just gonna merge all that um, I have to do that so that I can bridge it across I'm gonna delete all of this just sort of extrude this along And I'm just doing this so that I can have edges line up with these already existing edges so that there's no just sort of uh, geometry folded, or not folded, but just placed on top of each other. I can extrude that down. 
and then extrude it back. And now we sort of have this little bench shape in the back. Go ahead and merge those vertices. Um, I'm going to clean it up a little bit since we don't necessarily need these um, these edges here. We're going to be doing a bunch of Boolean cuts through. So let's make it as blank of a canvas as possible so the Boolean is as clean as possible. Okay, we can merge that. I might even just pull those guys there as well. Okay. Cool. So very, very basic. All we're going to be doing is taking now these blue pieces and cutting into it. So I'm going to duplicate this. Let's actually isolate this. Um, and let's just take these back guys here. I'm going to grab all the edges on the end and fill the hole. Um, of course, when we're doing a Boolean, we want both meshes to be totally closed off, so it's as clean of a Boolean as possible. Uh, if it's open, I'm pretty sure it would cost some either artifacts or the Boolean wouldn't bridge together properly, so it's just going to make it a little bit easier for us. Just going to grow this a little bit. And then, yeah, with these isolated, what we can do is line this guy up. So let's pull this back a little bit. We can position this so it's cutting all the way through. Um, it's one of those angles where we don't really have a super clear reference if that's the case. I think we have an underneath shot. Yeah, there's kind of like a bar blocking it. It's hard to tell. I might even say that it, if we can't see it, it's safer to assume that it's not cutting through. But this makes it for a what much weirder retopology to sort of connect edges from here to here, and it might mess with the baking. So it would just be easier all around for the model to cut all the way through. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and do that. One thing that might be concerning is I see this bar here that's blocking. Um... Oh, never mind. I was going to say I see a bar that's blocking it, which would mean that um, it's lower than this, which means it'd be lower than the legs. But I forgot that these feet are here. So we can totally still add geometry underneath uh, without disrupting any of that. So. With that being said, let's just do that. We'll cut it all the way through. Um, and if worse comes to worse, we can always fix it later, but I'm pretty pretty sure this is good. Um, it's gonna make cleanup quite a bit easier on this piece. So let's go ahead and freeze transformations, delete history. I'm going to make this gray so that it doesn't have a different color where it cuts. And Standard Boolean on difference. Clean up, delete history and base objects. So it seems like it still didn't do a very clean job here, which means there's a hole somewhere in this mesh, but it should be pretty easy. We just sort of have to grab these edges and snap them down. Yeah, that seems to do it. So I'm just gonna have to go through and grab all of these guys. A bit tedious. Um, ideally, we'd know where that hole in the mesh is and we can just go ahead and fix that. But um, at this point, <laughs> I'm just kind of leaving that surprise for when we're doing either low poly or UVs, we'll figure it out for sure then. Um, when we bring something like this into ZBrush, even if there's a hole somewhere, uh, we're going to be doing something called DynaMeshing, which will fix that um, automatically, and I'll explain that more when we're actually doing it, uh, which should be soon. I think after this we might have only two more parts, I think, 
um, if everything goes smoothly. This part actually might be a bit of a longer one. Um, well, you guys saw all the different parts that we have, so we're gonna have to go through and finish off all of those. Yeah, let's just snap that down. Vertex snap all of that. And now we have all of those guys slotting in pretty nicely. Um, I'm thinking if I want to round these ends, but I don't think that's really necessary to be honest. I think I might just leave it the way that it is. Or maybe lower them, sort of mess with the height of all of this. We have it going pretty deep, so we can play with that a bit. Okay, cool, that's the first thing done. So we can go ahead and change the color on that. Uh, of course, anything keyboard related is gonna be yellow, so we'll have that match. Um, which then leaves these two pieces, this piece on this side, and the keyboard. The keyboard's the easiest one, so I think we'll go ahead and do that one first. Um, none of these pieces are overly complicated, so they shouldn't take too long to execute. I just wanted to place them ahead of time um, simply so that I knew that the spacing was correct and I wouldn't have to sort of backtrack on any of that stuff. So let's take a look at what I did here. Essentially, I just sort of have a very basic cube extruded down, going across, going underneath this bar, and connecting here. Uh, that's kind of how I see it happening here. It's going, loops underneath this, and then slots in over here, same on the other side. Um, this is obviously very rough. I'd like to sort of borrow from one of these guys maybe. Uh, just to have the shapes be a lot more consistent. So let's go ahead and do that. We can double click one of these guys. We can use our Smart Duplicate Face tool to just sort of yank one of these guys out and leave the rest in place. Um, let's delete yeah, let's delete the whole back. I just want this size to be accurate and we can snap the pivot to a corner of course d is just to manipulate our pivot um i do rather like the placement of this so i'm just going to snap this here and then just pull this up this isn't anything <laughs> too groundbreaking uh, so let's just go ahead and do this. Should be pretty quick. I'm just going to grab those edges and extrude. So if we extrude it straight on, I'll just nix this one. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is I want this to stay straight. So I'm just going to pull this down very slightly. So now it clears that. It's gonna cut clean through that though, and go over here. So what I'm gonna do is, I think we can delete um, the sort of placeholder one for now. And we sort of have to have a smooth ring underneath it. This should be pretty easy. I'm going to just add an edge loop there. And I just want to make sure it's centered. So I'm going to vertex snap that to, yeah, the middle here. Um, if we double select that ring, we can bevel it. I'm going to want to bring that in pretty tight. This is going to be sort of the, um, the length of our bend. And then I can add another edge in there, pull it down, and I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. It's not the most complicated. Um, but then we can just sort of bevel that again. Add an additional 
segment. Stretch this guy out a little bit. Pull that down a bit. And of course we can just continue to smooth this out. It's not really necessary. In fact, I might wanna grab these two and pull it in so it's a bit of a tighter shape. Pull this up. But yeah, that's the gist of getting that kind of swoop underneath. And then and that takes us to here. Um, what we can do to sort of have this center, just grab the end and grab these vertices here and pull it up or rather snap it. To the middle. And this sort of gives us an opportunity here to massage it out a little bit and have it be kind of a natural transition. So you're already expecting it to be moving. It just happens to be moving uh, a little bit higher up. So unless you're really paying attention, you don't even notice. And I can just soften that up a little bit. Okay, cool. And then this is just wrapped around. So I'm going to grab the ends, the edges on the end, fill hole. And then from here, yeah, just bevel it. Make it nice and round. Merge the vertices. I think there's gonna be two. Nope, we're good there. Uh, and yeah, all we have to do is sort of cut through and then that's that, we can mirror it over. Um, I might want to pull this a bit more to the center and find a better way to sort of anchor this down. Um, but for now, let's focus on this side first. So we want to cut a hole this size. So let's smart duplicate these faces, which gives us this. We can then go ahead and fill hole. And we can use this guy as our Boolean mesh. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so we notice the gap. Make sure it's punching all the way through. Select the two of those guys and boom. Cuts it through. Um, clean up, delete history and base objects. I guess there's a hole somewhere. Yeah, so there's a hole right there, which means when we do our Boolean, uh, it doesn't connect things properly. It's okay. This one's pretty basic to bridge across. So that's all good. Um, but yeah, let's find a way to connect this a little bit more nicely. Um, I don't have a ton in mind as far as this goes, other than maybe adding a cut here and extruding both sides out. And then saying it's like welded down or something like that. Yeah, that's something that would work. I'm pretty happy with how that is. Overall, I think that's getting the job done so we can Press D uh, and holding X, we can move our pivot to the middle. X, of course, is grid snap, freeze transform, delete history, and mirror X. Just making sure that's not causing any issues. Seems to be lining up just fine on both sides. Perfect. Cool. Um, so what does that leave us with? It leaves us with this one. This one's simpler, so I'll start. And then this side's a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna have to, I guess, iron out some of the details a little bit more. Um, I 
but it's also pretty basic. So what I did with this, if I pull it aside, uh, kind of like the last one, just sort of borrowed from one of these existing keys. Um, had it going around one of the poles, goes up, and then <laughs> this is an incredibly janky extrusion, but uh, you can tell what I was doing with it. So that's kind of the shape I went for. Let's recreate it, but this time actually do it proper. And we always sort of have this guy to go off of to take a better look as to how things are wrapping around and how exactly they're extruded. And uh, this is actually a really good reference image to go off of when you're doing stuff like this. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and remake it. Um, so yeah, what I did was I essentially took one of these guys, used our smart duplicate, center pivot on that, just like before, deleted everything we don't need. Um, we can pull this guy aside since we don't need him. It's kind of like a cooking show where like I already have part of it done, but I'm, I'm remaking it with the audience. So let's line this guy up. Um, one thing to note, I guess, is the height of this. If you're trying to keep it all consistent, you might want to raise the height so it's in line with the other stuff. This might make it look a little bit more visually consistent. So yeah, I'd just keep that in mind. Uh, this one, it appears that we have it going over top of this guy. So let's try and repeat that. I'm just going to extrude this out. It clears that, which is nice. I suppose we could have it just go all the way under like so. But now that I'm looking at it, this is going pretty low. It's kind of resting a little too close to the legs for my liking. So I'm going to raise this up. Like so. In fact, what I might do is borrow from the one that we just made. So I'm going to take these faces. I'm going to use um, Smart Duplicate, Center Pivot, and let's go ahead and isolate these two and kind of Frankenstein them together. So I'm actually going to delete these faces. We can go ahead and just sort of move the pivot here, snap it on, mesh, combine, and merge those vertices so they're not just resting on top of each other. And let's see if we can um, de-isolate that. Kind of shimmy these guys around. So that's going through, that's going under. The only difference is that this one then goes up and has a sort of rounded shape that plugs in to, I believe it was this pole. Um, and if you're wondering how I sort of knew <laughs> where this plugs into, I gathered um, all these different reference images. We have a lot of, uh, images depicting what's going on on the left side when you're looking through the back like this piece here this here this here here um, but as far as what we're working on right now the piece on the right we only kind of have this and this shape here and we can just sort of barely tell that something's curving up and then we can see it going up here intersecting with this pole uh, it might be plugging into something else but at the very least, it's coming close to this pole and there's really nothing behind it. So I just imagine that it's plugging into that. That's the only thing I can think of that would <laughs> make some kind of sense. Um, like I said, we sort of have to interpret some of this stuff on our own when we don't have all the details. And that's a really good example of it. Um, for me, it's just important to make sure everything's sort of plugged in and has a home. Um, so that's kind of what I got out of that. Um, what we can do here now is we're not going to need these guys. So 
we are having to work with this more or less um, in a way that we can sort of extract from and rounded shapes aren't good for that. So let's turn this back into a square shape. I'm going to hold shift and drag to extrude this and we'll extrude it to about here where I previously had it. Um, and we're going to have to weave this up between these legs that we've now added, which shouldn't be too difficult. I'm going to add an edge loop. I want to cut it to be as thick um, as it currently is tall, like so. And now we should be able to extrude up. And I'm kind of going to go for this C shape. Um, Oh, <laughs> um, it appears I did this to the wrong thing. Let me undo all of this. Yeah, I was doing that to the spacebar one. I was wondering why it was so far off to the side. Okay, let me quickly do that again. I need to square this guy off. I'm gonna snap these vertices. <laughs> Probably should double check that. Um, okay. Cause yeah, I was thinking like I remember there being more, <laughs> more space when I was doing it before. But yeah, we can snap that forward. it again, keeping it nice and thick. And now when we extrude up, we're, okay, we're clearing all that stuff, which is nice. Um, but yeah, we're still going to be going for this C shape. The most I sort of have to go off of here is that you can see it wrapping around the end of the bell when you're looking at it straight on. Uh, and it sort of goes into this dip. So it's not the best reference, but it's something to go off of. Um, in fact, it kind of looks like it's even going straight up and then curving. And now that I'm looking at it more, it kind of looks like it branches off in two directions. Now this is kind of Important to note because there's other ones that do that. Like this guy, for example, branches off in two directions. And we even have it blocked out here. And I was gonna plan on cutting a slot into it. Um, yeah, we just don't have the most reference on it but it kind of that's the vibe I'm getting from it now so I'm going to extrude this up just trying to capture that same angle Then it sort of starts to curve. And yeah, we're trying to plug it in to this guy here. So I'll just sort of have an end position. So we can probably pull this back a little bit, pull this down. I 
and then maybe add an edge loop there. Hmm, the curve is definitely much more dramatic. Curves and then goes up. I guess that's because, yeah, it curves quite a bit and then extrudes up after. So it's much more like a full um, let me delete this a full 90 degree turn and then it turns back up kind of like an S or something like that. Let's extrude and holding J rotate that 45 degrees. So then that is kind of level with this. Add a cut in the middle to round it out. Kind of massage this. And then this goes straight out. So that's kind of matching the reference a little bit more. And then sharply turns back up. Do something like that. And <laughs> definitely a little bit too thick, so let's pull that back in. This is also very angular, so I'm going to add a cut, so holding shift to make sure it's like 50 degrees, or 50% um, rather. And then I can pull this out. Okay. We still want these two things to be lining up. So I can pull this in. And we can actually isolate these guys. And just kind of line it up this way. So it definitely seems like it starts to be curving a lot lower. If I try and mimic this. Okay, and now it's mostly just the transition between here as well as here. 
Um, I feel like part of the reason we don't see this going straight down is because it's kind of curving in here and then curving back out. Um, yeah, like I said, I've it very <laughs> poorly blocked out over here. So let's go ahead and try and remake that. We can delete this guy for now. We don't really need him. So we probably wanted to start branching from about here. So I can even go ahead and delete this and then maybe just try a series of extrudes, maybe that far down and then let's see what happens if we bridge that across and then maybe add an edge loop pull this in maybe even snap this down like so Yeah, it's a pretty good transition. The thing is we just have to duplicate it on the other side. So if I delete this, we can smart duplicate these faces. Rotate them around 180 degrees. Snap that in. Hmm. Let's try something like this, where I delete that. You can combine it all into one. And then we should be able to just sort of bridge and extrude things across, like right here. And then these guys can extrude down. Clean that up a little bit. Just close enough any holes that we have open right now. So bridge and then fill hole. And that should connect in there pretty well. Um, I guess this whole thing's a little bit further over than I expected. And I <laughs> imagine it's gonna look pretty sloppy if I do something like that. Uh, I actually don't think that looks that bad. If I move that edge there and have it kind of be like angled, it then sort of gives us some room here to move this guy back a little bit. And then kind of just give these guys the same treatment or if I extrude this out, snap it to the end, you can kind of add a cut in there and it'll have its own little place to rest into. Go ahead and give that a very subtle bevel to sort of smooth it out. Okay, so that piece is mostly done. We do have to deal with this sort of connection here. Um, let's select all these pieces. It kind of looks like it's just going to be holding it or cupping it. Um, 
like if I bring this up as high as it goes, it then starts clipping into this other piece, right? So let's, let's have it go about halfway up. And then we can have this sort of cut the top of it out. Um, right, smart duplicate face. We're gonna use this guy as a Boolean mesh. Yep, we'll isolate these two guys. Freeze transforms, delete history. And just a new Boolean. Clean up, delete history and base objects. Didn't actually cut through, but we can do that ourselves pretty easily. bridging all this stuff. Okay. And then I'm actually gonna pull this in a little bit because it's definitely a lot wider on this side. So now it's just kind of gripping on. And I'm curious if I were to maybe add a cut here and straighten it out. If we could like extrude this and it's like a little bit more stable looking, something like that. Kind of seems to make more sense. gonna have to ooh, clean it up a little bit but yeah a lot of this stuff like I said uh, previously <laughs> we don't really have any reference of so we're just kind of making it up but that's at least believable it's sort of a key interacting with things cutting in connecting it's not just like a one-off random piece, like it's actually interacting with everything, which I think is important for the believability of it. Uh, the only thing that's left to do is to add a cut for this guy to go into. What I'm actually gonna do is smart duplicate this, because I want the width to stay consistent. And I already know the length is there, so I'm going to Make sure this guy is covered. And this is pretty much exactly what we were uh, doing before. Can I extrude this back? Make sure the normals are the right orientation. Just use this guy to cut through. So keep the colors consistent. Standard Boolean. And then yeah, just like before. Can merge that guy down. So now it kind of has like its own place to go into interacting with the pieces um, in a way that it should be. I feel like that looked better when it was kind of a sharper sharper transition, right? Just making sure I like the look of that. Maybe I want it to be a little bit thinner. A little bit longer. Cool. So all that's left to do is this side. Now, um, when I was looking into this and trying to find a purpose for everything, um, 
<laughs> we didn't really have a use for this key. So I think what we're actually gonna end up doing is just getting rid of it altogether. Um, it didn't really seem necessary, but I kind of like the placement of it. I'm trying to think if maybe we should get rid of that key. Mm. No, let's just get rid of this one. Um, and then maybe pull this forward or something. I just didn't like how symmetrical it all was. Or maybe pull it up a little bit. Okay, so what's going on with this one? Um, like I said before, we had a lot more reference for this one. We sort of had this piece that's splitting, um, and then as you can see, it sort of goes up curves. This is all one piece because it's kind of attached here, and it has these sort of spiky parts, a spring that's attaching to itself. Um, so that one's a bit more complicated, but we also have a very simple one that more or less just goes, <laughs> just goes up. Um, if you look at how I've sort of handled that, I have it going up and sort of doing the same thing on this side. So it's attaching just like this guy was. Um, this is actually really good news because it just sort of adds more symmetry and cohesion. Like it seems like this is actually doing something because it's reoccurring multiple times. So in honest, like all honesty, I feel like we could probably duplicate this one over and reuse most of it for this guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna pull it over. And this one goes into this front key. So let's delete that and isolate this so we can get it all plugged in. No point reinventing the wheel if we don't have to. I'm gonna put my pivot there so we can snap it to the front and then grab all of it and put the pivot in the corner so we can snap it to this corner. So this should slot in perfectly. Not quite. <laughs> Try that again. Okay, that seems to be a snug fit. So let's see how close everything else is. So this is going through there, but we don't really want it to because there's a spring in place. This going under makes sense. Um, How low this is might not be very desirable, but I think it makes sense. Um, yeah, we're probably gonna want this to go over or under. And then instead of all this elaborate stuff, um, I kind of want this one just being a simple curve that goes right up. So what I'm going to do is delete all this stuff. We don't really need it. Just kind of want to connect these two and have it slowly curve into itself. So I'm going to snap these verts to there and extrude this and snap it to here. That way that these two are the same thickness. Um, also means we can Go ahead and fill this hole. Let's extrude that. Merge it all together. Get rid of the unneeded uh, geo. 
with this, we can clean it up like so, and then we can round it out. So that's already doing most of the work for itself. Um, we are just going to sort of have to figure out how to maneuver around this, this spring. I think just to shake it up, we should probably put it over since we've already done under uh, quite a few times. Let's grab these edges, fill hole. We can select these guys, shift right click, merge faces to center, and then just snap the vertice to a corner. Oh, I snap them together. We'll have to merge them one at a time because it's merged every every vert on both faces into one vert. So we'll merge faces to center, and then we'll press G to repeat last command. Merge those guys; so they're not just floating. Get rid of that edge. Um, let's see. thinking we could just copy this that might be one of the best ways to do it if I add another cut here and just delete this geo we can then steal this stuff and just kind of be resourceful just used a smart duplicate face can rotate that 180 um, Right, it would make more sense to snap it that way, just so it actually clears it. Um, from here, can just sort of move our pivot around and snap this guy into place as well. Combine all of these. And then, It's just a matter of getting this sort of like rounded look, kind of like a J, um, which should be pretty should be pretty easy if I just sort of pull this up and bevel it. That pretty much does it from this angle, not so much from underneath. Kind of leaves some things to be desired, so I might actually get rid of some of this geo maybe where it peaks in its heightness and then massage the geo so it's a little smoother of a transition So, curves up, connects like the other side, goes under and over, and plugs in properly. Sweet. Okay, so that's another part, and we just have one more now. Um, this one has a bit more going on with it. It has like a spring attachment. It has this sort of pole that I believe connects to here if I look at the reference for it the spring is definitely like it's definitely um, 
looping around and attached to itself. Like that's very clear, but then we have this sort of pole coming out. And I can't tell if this is attached to the side or if it's attached to the top. Um, but regardless, it's very clearly going all the way to the end. And it seems like it's lining up pretty well with this guy. So I imagine they connect. I think we'll probably do probably do these two parts in their own um, separate episode afterwards. But for now, let's just wrap up this guy and then we'll probably probably call it a video. Um, yeah. Um, with this guy, we can also just sort of Frankenstein a bunch of pieces together. So I'm going to duplicate the one that we just finished it, uh, finished and isolate it with the button. And this is just to give us sort of like a base to work off of. Um, can pull this forward, put the pivot at the front, snap that there, and then we want to make sure that it's lined up horizontally. So I'm going to put the pivot here and snap the whole thing over. In theory, this should plug in properly. Is this No, that seems to be good. Okay, so let's let's move this guy aside first. Um, or maybe not quite yet. Um, one thing we have to do is have this sort of end piece. If we look at our reference, it has a sort of split here, so we're going to try and mimic that. Uh, this thing is actually pretty close to it though, so we can duplicate this guy. Rip off that bottom part. And use it. Um, it's definitely much more of like a Y though seems like if you cut through the middle I'm just straightening that out kind of goes up so I'm just going to quickly implement that and then clean up the geo on it Merge vert, and then we can just connect it like so. Okay, let's see where we can attach this guy. Just making sure that's the right one. Yep. So we're going to want to more, more or less get rid of all of this. We just want it to sort of clear this bump and then plug it into this guy. Seems to connect pretty well. So we actually have this pretty close to the, the mock one I've set up. Just going to scoot it over to be a bit more centered. Can even raise it up. If I isolate this in the frame, it seems like that's cutting in quite a bit. So I'm just going to Lower that, pull it over, pull this up so the thickness stays consistent. And 
and just sort of shimmy this over. I kind of all want it to stay smooth. Uh, smooth with the same thickness. Um, so let's see the kind of shape we're going for. So one of them curves and then goes kind of just up. This is the best example. So yeah, we can see the sort of banana split um, bottom part, but this part curves and then just goes up and it's resting against the wall here. Just trying to find a correct place for this to slot into. Okay, fill hole on that. Do you want to thicken it up? Okay, I think that's doing a pretty good job of splitting while simultaneously connecting. This does seem to be a bit sharper though. So I think I'm going to lower this all quite a bit. Okay, so then we have this piece go up, out, up. In fact, it almost all seems more in this direction. But yeah, let's extrude just a little bit. Straight up again and rotate 90 degrees. Snap that forward. Put it directly on top. Just merge that. Can extrude this out. Seems to be, yeah, hugging the wall. And then we can do a very similar thing where we extrude that. Move the pivot here, put it in the corner, and rotate. Snapping that. Seems like this is a bit higher and a bit further over. Um, but regardless, it then extrudes up again. And there's a decent distance from the top, about that far. Um, one thing I do want to do is round these out a little bit more, just like we did on the other side, holding shift to snap at 50%. Just sort of pull these out a bit. Okay. 
Okay. So now we can go ahead and delete that one. Um, it does have a round top, so let's go ahead and add the round top. Gonna fill hole up here. And just give it a bevel. Merge it all, because there's gonna be two verts directly on top here. It seems like they're still there. Sometimes you'll get this where they stay on top even if you merge. Uh, in that case, just select them, go to merge vertices, and then just merge vertices to center. And it'll force everything selected to go into one. So that should do the trick. This one's looking quite a bit more complicated, but it's gonna get <laughs> a little bit worse, I'm afraid. Bring that in. Okay, so now we have this, yeah, this hook shape that kind of connects to the top, hooks around, and then comes across here and has some spiky parts as a part that a spring connects into. Um, we'll probably just make this part and then finish for this section, and then um, we'll connect it all in the next part. So, we want it to line up with this perfectly. So, I'm actually going to pull this back a little bit. And let's see. kind of have that shape here. So I'm just going to, uh, once again, borrow Geo to save time. Let's go ahead and Smart Duplicate Face. We can delete this. We can actually delete all of this. And then if I put my pivot here, we should be able to mirror this along Z because this is blue. Z is blue here. And we get a nice little U shape. Nice. Um, can rotate that. Let's isolate these two because I want this to be lined up with it. So I'm going to put the pivot here just to snap it flush this way. And they're super, super close, but they are attached by some sort of third piece. So I'm just gonna snap this to the side to make sure it's flush. Um, but I am gonna keep a bit of a space there. The U part seems to come pretty low Um, this then goes, of course, all the way up. And I might raise the U a little bit. It looks a little silly being that low. It might also just be the angle. So yeah, let's have that go about this high. And it has these spikes on the inside. So they start pretty much at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is have them start from as soon as it's not being curved. And they shouldn't be too difficult to make. Um, all we have to do is use some insert edge loops. You can find that under Edit Mesh, or sorry, Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop. Uh, if you select this little box, this guy will come up. And we just click and it'll add a bunch of edge loops. 
let's go with say 14 and we're going to be doing this so that we can select every other edge and pull it like so. So obviously that's too little and also um, where is it again? That's an, uh, an even number. We're going to need an odd number. That's going to let us keep these two guys untouched and we can still have a nice distribution. So let's go with like 21. One, two, three, four, five, six, excuse me, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Distribution seems pretty even to this. Fill hole at the top, and then let's just go ahead and clean this up. Hmm. Going to merge these guys to the center. And these guys, some of these are very, very tight. I think the best way to deal with this because when we're snapping some of these down like the edges are going like outside of the face what we could do is close it off like this This will be a lot easier to manage since things aren't sort of cutting in and out. It's just all flush. Okay, let's go ahead and grab all of these verts. Snap them forward. or snap them up rather, like so. And then it should be So I'll have to do these one at a time. They were just kind of misaligned there a little bit. You can merge those. The good news is we only have to do one side and then we can just duplicate it to the other. But we can now snap all these guys up.
Okay, let's go ahead and merge that. Can just straight up delete these. And then we should just be able to duplicate this all over. We're just gonna want these faces here. If we do a smart duplicate, we can now just snap it to this side, reverse, mesh, combine, merge vertices, and fill hole. So that'll do that. Um, now it just sort of extrudes over and droops down. So let me sort of pull this out. Just gonna add another edge loop in there, but let's go for that extrusion. Let's change our reference to something that'll show it a bit better. Seems to be going up. Must plateau at some point and then comes down after the hook. We don't really have reference of this point, so I'm just going to imagine the thickness sort of tapering off. Um, We can see based on this that it does go quite a bit higher, more rapidly. And I can even just delete this guy. We don't need it anymore. So also looks like a much sharper hook. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in. Definitely seems like we have too many spikes and that this should be thicker. Let's 
try and find some more angles of it. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, okay. We definitely have too many. Um, just delete some of these. Merge these guys to center. Fill hole. I'm gonna to have to work on rounding this out a little bit, but then I think the shape is mostly there. Okay, let's focus on the sort of hook part now. I think what I should be doing is probably just sticking with one main reference, and I'm going to be using this one. So in this case, I'm going to thicken this up and keep it relatively close, and then just drop it down. The height seems to be about level with where the spikes stop. Just something to compare it to. Like so. And then if we isolate it, we kind of want it to be getting thinner as it goes down. So I'll just sort of adjust some of these Okay, round this out, the bevel. <laughs> Could probably do the same here. Right, and we still have to do this connection piece. So once again, I'll just steal some geo, the smart duplicate. Snap it like so. Now this isn't gonna be 
perfect. So if I combine this merge verts, you'll see that it's, yeah, well, first of all, it's not the right height, um, but it doesn't really house it properly. So let's actually scrap that. And we'll just do it, yeah, the old fashioned way like before. So we'll smart duplicate face, isolate these two guys, and let's go ahead and do a Boolean. Delete history and base object, and we can just sort of bridge across, very nice. Go ahead and add a cut, smush it down, and then just extrude it for a little bit of stability. And just like before, clean it up by grabbing all the edges in the middle. And snapping over, we can merge the verts on that. And that almost does it for this piece. The one thing that's missing is um, this guy has a little piece of metal kind of connecting the two of them. So that should be pretty, pretty insanely easy to make. a cube on there, stretching it across. And then we could probably make this all one mesh, so I'll probably end up baking this down. So I'll put it up there and then just sort of round the edges a bit. Okay, I think the only thing we're missing is a cut here, and then that'll probably do it for this part. Um, just like before, we're just gonna steal this. So, Smart duplicate. Square this all off. Except for we want this right on the end. In fact, I probably want it. Hmm. I want to make sure there's a little bit of room here. So I thin this one out because if I make it too thick, there wouldn't be any way to sort of connect this all up. 
So I'm going to keep this one a little bit thinner. And let's go ahead and do the Boolean. Make sure it cuts all the way down and make sure it's the same color. Freeze transform, fleet history, and boom. Delete history and base objects. And just like before, we're going to have to extrude that all down and merge. Cool. So that'll do it for this part. Um, I might want to thicken this up actually. Yeah, that looks better. Um, snap that to the end. Just have a consistent transition. Yeah, that'll do it for this part. So we have the keyboard pretty much fully done, even with the space bar and the side pieces. Um, which means, if I go back to our master sheet, um, all we really have to do is finish off the spring and the connection piece. I still sort of want to see exactly how that's all connected and how that all uh, fits in. Um, I've decided for this keyboard probably not to do it because if we work hard on the back piece, um, it might just end up blocking it and it's getting kind of complicated at the bottom as it is. So maybe, like I'll think about it when we're done everything, everything, but I wouldn't want it blocking this kind of stuff. We'll see. We'll see when we get there. Um, but things that we have to do for sure are, yeah, those side pieces with the spring, um, the back, just sort of like these contraptions here, which we can do in one part, and then just tiny, tiny little frame fixes that I've been looking at, uh, which we could tack onto a different part. It doesn't really deserve its own part. So I would say hopefully two more parts and this is all done. Uh, one part for finishing this and these guys, and then the final part for this, and then we will reconsider adding this. But I think if we go back to the model with it, this guy, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's really necessary. It might be a little bit too much. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this part. Uh, we did get quite a bit done, which is really nice. And then, yeah, we'll be getting pretty much everything done in the next two parts. And then we're moving on to high poly. Sweet. So thank you guys for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you the next part. See ya.